Hey all, I'm Adarsh Rai. I'm over here to present this wonderful series in front of you, Master the Topic. So here we are with the discussion of this very beautiful topic, free fall motion. So what to all things we are going to discuss over here in this topic is we'll be talking about Galileo's experiment. His experiment was very evident. He was finally able to say and explain to others what actually free fall motion is. We'll be looking into that. Then we'll be talking about the standard cases of free fall motion. What all standard cases are there? The questions, they are all related with this standard cases. So we'll be talking about objects which are falling from a rising balloon. That's a very interesting case, right? Then at the end, we'll be talking about equations of motion, how we'll be using them and finally getting to a result. Then we'll be also talking about acceleration due to gravity. What actually is acceleration when objects are solely under the influence of gravity? And at the end, we'll be talking about some examples as well of free fall motion, right? So now, Initially, what I want you people to do is, let's get into history. Let's learn what actually was the assumption when things weren't in order, when things weren't in books. So how actually free fall motion was understood. So earlier, this was the time before Galileo. So initially, what was assumed that when two objects are falling under the influence of gravity, then the object with a heavier mass will fall at a faster rate as compared to an object with a smaller mass. And this was the assumption for so long. And then finally, what Galileo did was, he performed an experiment. He went to the top of Leaning Tower of Pisa. He threw two objects of different masses. And what he finally observed was, and that observation finally came to a result. And he was finally able to decode what free fall motion actually is. So based on his experiment, what he finally understood was that whenever objects are falling under gravity, they perform an accelerated motion. That means the velocities are not constant. They are increasing with time as they fall in downward direction. One more important conclusion he made. He also made that this acceleration is constant for all objects. So whether it be an object of heavier mass, of a lighter mass, a feather or an iron ball, all will experience the same amount of acceleration due to gravity and its magnitude I'm sure many of you must have seen it's 9.8 meter per second square and this thing should be kept in mind we are talking about all the motions we are near to the surface of earth so we are not achieving greater heights and then observing things okay presently what I'm talking about is all the motions which are very near to the surface of earth so based on this, we can finally conclude what actually is free fall motion. So free fall motion is nothing. It is the motion when an object is observing forces only due to gravity. The motion of any object, if it is only and only under the influence of gravity, that motion is free fall motion. So we will have to neglect the effect of air resistance. We cannot take that into account. We cannot take into account any other forces acting on the object. We only have to consider that the object is performing motion only and only under the influence of gravity. Now let us look into the cases. What all standard cases are possible for us to actually decode what free fall motion is. First case which we are going to take is that we are standing on a building and we are just dropping a ball. Okay, we are just dropping a ball and just analyzing how its motion will be and just deducing some key elements from it. So what are the things we can actually derive from this motion is, as you can see, its initial velocity will be equal to zero. The second thing will be, it will have an accelerated path. It will have an accelerated motion. That means its velocity will keep on increasing. There are two very important things we can, which we can actually find out from that is. So if you can see at every second, its velocity was continuously increasing. So the velocity at first second was actually lesser than the velocity at second. And similarly, velocity at nth second was actually greater than the velocity as n minus 1th second. And same result goes for the displacement as well. As you can see, the displacement on the first second was actually lesser than the displacement in the second second. So basically what I can say is displacement and velocity for every second which passes by will keep on increasing. 
Okay, so these were the key pointers which we can actually derive from this particular case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve similar cases like these. I'm going to throw a ball in upward direction. I'm going to throw a ball in downward direction and similar analysis I'll be doing. I'll be just trying to find out what all key pointers we can actually find out from such motion. Now for case two. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is now I'm going to throw the ball and I'm going to throw the ball in downward direction. So now what the change arises is now I have an initial velocity for the ball and its initial velocity will be equal to V. Now, as you can see the path of the ball, it moves at a very faster pace. Reason being it has an initial velocity to it. And now what the acceleration will do. So acceleration here will be in downward direction and it will keep on increasing that initial velocity which was provided to it. And a similar analysis goes over here as well. Its velocity and displacement will keep on increasing with every second which passes by. So this was all about case two. Now let us look at case three. So I've thrown the ball downward. I've dropped it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw the ball again. And now I'm going to throw the ball in upward direction. So how will the motion look like? So now the motion will look like that the ball will initially go to a maximum height, momentarily come to rest. And then after that, it will again fall down. So how to actually decode such a motion? So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to provide directions to motion. So suppose I'm providing positive direction towards this side. And if I'm providing negative direction to downward side, then what I can say is that the initial velocity of the ball was plus V. And the acceleration provided to the ball at each and every second was equal to minus G. Similarly, what I can initially say is that its velocity was continuously decreasing while it was ascending upwards. And after it reached its maximum height, when it began to move downward, its velocity was continuously increasing. Same goes with displacement as well. While it was ascending up, its displacement was decreasing for every second. And while coming downward, its displacement began to increase for every second. So this was all about case three. Now let us look towards case four. So in case four, now we are on ground. Now we are on ground and we are throwing a ball in upward direction. And this is a pretty common type of a case, which all of you must have observed. So what happens when I throw a ball upward, what I do is now I provide an initial velocity to the ball and going by the same sign convention that is downward as negative, upward as positive. Now what I can say is the initial velocity of the ball to be plus V. And the same analysis, the ball will experience an acceleration due to gravity in downward direction. So what will happen? The ball initially, when it is ascending up, its velocity will continuously decrease for every second till the point it has reached its maximum height. And when it has reached its maximum heights, its velocity will momentarily come to zero. And after it has reached its maximum height, again, it will descend in downward direction and its velocity and displacement will continuously increase for every second. So this is actually the analysis which I can make for case four. Now case five is a pretty complex one, but it's a very interesting case, right? So what happens is over here, there's a balloon and an object is attached to it. So what happens? The balloon moves upward. Now at some point in time, what happens? The glue between the object and the balloon, it just waves off. So now what happens? The object begins to move downward. So there are basically two frame of references to actually observe the motion of the object. So one frame is when I'm actually standing on ground. So for me, how the motion of the balloon and the object will seem to be, let's take a look. So what happens now the balloon, as you can see, it's moving upward and there the balloon left contact with the object. And after that, the balloon has its own path and the object object has a path. Remember the case wherein I threw the object in upward direction from the top of a building. It is somewhat like that. It had a velocity initially. It reached the top max point where its velocity momentarily came to zero. And after that, it came downwards. That's pretty nice. And this is actually the thing is the motion of both the balloon and the object when I'm standing on ground. Now let us imagine what will happen if my frame of reference becomes a balloon. Let's take that into account. So now we are positioned at the top of a balloon. And now let us observe 
how the motion of the ball will appear to us. So as you see, whenever we are from a frame of reference that is in motion, we normally don't consider it to be moving. We consider it to be at rest and we actually observe the other objects to move. So as we are moving up, we consider ourselves that we aren't moving. We are at rest, right? And actually what is moving is the ball is moving, right? So the motion of the ball in this case is pretty similar to what we have solved in case one, wherein from the height of a tar, I have actually dropped the ball, right? So in this case as well, what all key pointers actually I can devise is that its initial velocity will be equal to zero. It will have an acceleration due to gravity that too in downward direction and both its velocity and displacement will keep on increasing for every second which passes by. Okay, so now as we have seen all the major cases which are possible of free fall motion, we are finally in a state to actually say what free fall motion is. And what all conclusions we can actually derive from this discussion is that an object in free fall motion, gravity is the only influence acting on it. This can be the first conclusion which we can derive from it. The other one is under free fall motion, acceleration is always downward, right? And it has the same magnitude for all objects, irrespective of the magnitude of masses, right? And one very important conclusion which we can observe is whenever objects are performing free fall motion, they experience a very unique kind of state. And that state is basically known as weightlessness. But what is weightlessness? Let's keep that topic at rest for the moment and we'll discuss about it in the future discussions. But this is not all. To ace your topic and to perform more, to have a very good insight about free fall motion, it's always recommended to perform and practice as many questions as you can. And for that matter, you can download Extra Marks, the learning app, the link to which is provided in the description box. Reason being, you can practice hundreds of questions based on free fall motion and actually ace this topic. You can have so many questions designed in so many formats that it will actually boost your existing knowledge. Moreover, you can also test your skills. You can test your skills by practicing score booster tests, quick mock tests. You can also create your own test. So don't stay at rest. Accelerate your preparation. This was all. Thank you.